joining us tonight. Um, this is a really important topic of conversation, and unfortunately, so many people don't even realize that sleep disorder breathing exists. And when we look at these different symptoms, which go from anywhere from ADD, ADHD, to bedwetting, um, to allergies, to asthma, these are symptoms that we see in children. In fact, 9 out of 10 children suffer with at least one of these symptoms. And typically, we wouldn't ever associate this with a dental condition. But truth be told, when we look at these conditions, we can look at the root cause that affects these symptoms or create these symptoms. And it basically boils down to a compromised airway, a narrow palate, and a tongue being placed in the wrong position in the mouth. So it leads to mouth breathing instead of nasal breathing. So Healthy Start is basically combining correction of a dental condition, straightening teeth, but also addressing the root cause of sleep disorder breathing in order to eliminate the symptoms you see here. So research over the past 20 years has linked these conditions and the common root cause to sleep disorder breathing. As I said before, sleep disorder breathing can basically appear with many various symptoms, symptoms that aren't related to what you would think of as sleeping or breathing disorders. So right now, if your child has one of these symptoms that we're looking at, it can be solved by many different avenues. Some of them are drugs, some of them are um, sleep studies, allergy testing, um, they could be seeing counseling, therapy, um, various different um, avenues, but none of these avenues really address the root cause that could be occurring. So it's really important that even though we see these symptoms that maybe our first avenue is to investigate what these are and see our dental professional. So when we look at the symptoms of drugs, um, therapies, they basically do, they address symptoms only and not the root cause. They tend to be short-term band-aids. They can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and basically ineffective. What are the other healthcare systems simply don't have such great solutions for these crises? So when we look at some of these symptoms, we're going to be starting to look at our dentist. For the answers. Dentists have the tools to impact the development of a child's airway. Not only the airway, but it also provides the means to teach them how to swallow properly, how to increase the arch width so that there is a place to put the tongue where it needs to be, and basically at the same time straighten their teeth. So when we think of our dentists, we kind of think of cavities, and not straight teeth. Or maybe you think about straight teeth. But both of those in combination can actually impact the future health and the well-being of every child. So when we look at our child, here are some examples of two children that basically, if you look at them, obviously they have large circles under their eyes. We call that venous pooling. We see that this child here has an open mouth. So it tends to be a mouth breather. We can actually look at their profiles. Sometimes you see the chin more of an addition position rather than in a full forward position, basically restricting and compromising the airway. As you see, you can see the chin, you can see the chin. Sometimes we call that a funnel look because really the chin and the neck kind of blend. There is no definition. And until we're able to actually advance the lower jaw, we can't put that position of the jaw in the right place, and it also compromises the airway. We have to remember that the back of the head is a flat surface. If the lower chin is moved back, it's going to compromise somewhere, and the place it can compromise is basically the airway. So when we look at the root causes of sleep disorder breathing, we're looking at the compromised airway. Mouth breathing, causing the tonsils and the adenoids to become an inflamed and swollen, underdeveloped lower jaws with a high arch, improper swallowing habits, weak tongue and a tongue that is in the incorrect position, underdevelopment of the muscular dura to extended feeding and possibly pacifier use. When these children actually, um, we talk about maybe lack of breastfeeding. Um, sometimes it's not so much the lack of breastfeeding, but it's also in combination with the increased use of bottles and pacifiers. 
Breastfeeding actually encourages and basically strengthens the oral cavity so that the arch width is developed and the position of the jaw. When that doesn't occur, and we've seen less and less in our society, basically since industrialization, so we're seeing more and more malocclusions in the mouth, meaning that we see more crowding, more narrow arches instead of wide arches and lower jaws in the right position. When we look at the cranial facial growth of a child, we realize that a massive amount happens in the very early stages of life. So if we look at a two-year-old, 55% development. If we look at a four-year-old, 73. By 12, it's basically finished, 89%. So we, we see such a huge, huge amount of development early on. So if we can intercede at a very early age, we can actually affect that child much more than if we wait later on in life. Normal development. So what exactly is normal development when we talk about it? It's basically a forward and downward movement. And we want to make sure that our teeth are growing and our jaw is developing so that we are expanding that airway in the greatest amount possible. So let's look at dentitions 400 years ago. We don't see as much malocclusion in these um, basically um, prehistoric malocclusion or prehistoric jaws. But what we see nowadays is more and more crowding. We can actually find that 92% of the children we see actually will have malocclusions. So it's, the percentages go up with every generation. So how can we prevent this? What do we see that's causing? There are different studies that have occurred to actually look at what has transpired over these years. Um, we look at dietary. We see that we have a softer diet rather than a harder diet. We see that permanent teeth eruption, um, ideal occlusions, non-resistant processed foods, um, eruption and cuspal coordination, loss of teeth. We see a lot of different malocclusions, different incidences that basically affect, prohibit um, proper growth and development and malocclusions in these young child children. So again, we had talked about what we see with the Western culture, soft diets, population, we see in the first generation, we saw about 50% rate of malocclusion. Second generation, 70. Third generation, 85. And now we're on our fourth generation, which we are seeing about 92%. So we see malocclusions on a rise. We also see sleep disorder breathing on the rise. We find nine out of 10, again, suffer from sleep disorder breathing. We look at a lot of our um, advertisements. We look at our lifestyles and we see that we have limited breastfeeding. Six weeks to six months. Um, sometimes we see a year. But when that stops, we reintroduce or reintroduce a bottle and a pacifier. Both of those basically cause a depression of the tongue. We see soft diet, we see processed food. These are cases that basically, this was what you would call a perfect dentition. So if you look at your child, you need to see, this is the baby teeth, we like to see slight spaces, because those spaces basically provide the room for the permanent dentition to erupt, and erupt into the mouth without rotations and without crowding. Unfortunately, this is such a rare breed. Usually we see the teeth so close together that there aren't the spaces that we usually would want to see, which would then lead to, obviously, as the permanent teeth erupt, crowding, um, rotations, um, we find the bite has been altered. So anyways, we want to see this, we don't, we rarely see this. So how do we intercede in your child to make sure their jaws are developing properly, their airway is open, their teeth are going to erupt in straight, and the narrow arches are expanded? If we look at airways, we can see that we want to see an airway that is full so that the air can fall, flow normally. We have adenoids and tonsils that sometimes can be touching and interfere with this um, breathing symptoms that we see. So when we look at our child, we look at various symptoms that occur in the airway to see if there is blockage that's occurring, if the airway is compromised, if they're breathing through their mouth rather than their nasal cavity. 
And all of these are what we look at besides looking at the dentition in order to straighten their teeth. The maxilla. So when we look at the results, we want to expand the arches. This is a famous doctor that basically says our results that dental arch expansion improves sleep disorder breathing in patients with upper and lower jaw constriction and can be a valid treatment. So a healthy start, that's basically what we're looking at our child. We want to expand the arches, make sure the teeth have the right amount of space in order to erupt. We want a place for the tongue to rest in the proper position in the upper palate. We want to make sure our child is breathing through their mouth, or through their nose rather than through their mouth. And in order to have that, we have to have the tongue in the right position. And as long as we can encourage the growth and development in that forward and downward direction, we can accomplish all of those feats. So let's look at an airway of a 10-year-old. So we can look at a normal airway and we can look at a restricted airway. So if we see on a set this kind of airway, you can see the measurement. It's small. It's almost the size of a coffee store. I don't know if any of you have tried to breathe through a coffee stirrer, but it's impossible. You get a headache in about two minutes just from trying. But that might be your child. That might be your child every single day, every night, for their entire life. What our goal is, by using the Healthy Start treatment, is to bring that lower jaw forward in order to open up that airway and get the oxygen in and breathe through their nose. So when we look at the tentition, we are looking to also alter and encourage that development. Remember, forward and down. Airway of a 10-year-old. Again, you see what we call that funnel shape of the neck. It basically means the lower chin is dished in. We see that very frequently in our children, and it just means the lower jaw has not been developed. That lower jaw is pushed back, obviously, what's compromised, the airway. So this child, you can see a more normal development of the lower jaw. The profile looks more in proportion. Again, we talk about a compromised airway and what it feels like for a child. We see a coffee stir. That is what it feels like. If we breathe through that, that's a compromised airway. What we want is something as big as a garden house. So this is what could be occurring in your child. This is our goal. We have a child here I don't know if this is I've got the video to add to that. Okay, Sorry. good. Okay, this is a, um, Elijah. Uh, Eli. Eli. This is Eli. He's a mouth breather, and we see what can happen during sleep with children, especially if their airway is compromised. Obviously, Eli's a very young child. I think he's about four. But you can see how the breathing is interrupted. It actually cuts off his breath when he is breathing. And by moving that lower jaw forward, we actually put him in the position where he's breathing through his nose, he's calming, he's getting the oxygen he needs. These appliances that we're going to be talking about with Healthy Start basically puts, him, puts a child in that same position. So it basically trains them to breathe through their nose. And it encourages the oxygen from coming in in a, a regulated form, rather than through the mouth with the option of the lower jaw drifting back Maybe the condition is a current condition where during the day they also breathe through their mouth. So this is our goal. This is what we're aiming to do. So when you look at your child tonight, take a look and see if they have those features that we're looking at. Maybe even take a video of them at night. Um, we are so surprised when the doctors, even parents say, oh, my child has no breathing issues. They go in at night. Just take your iPhone. Record them for 30 minutes. You'll be shocked. Um, we find more and more parents realize their children have issues of interrupted breathing that they had no knowledge of. When we put our child to sleep, we tiptoe out, we shut the door, and God forbid they wake up. So this way, let's, let's take a second look. It's a really important um, criteria that I think every parent needs to know about their child. So when we look at the whole motion of what's going on, especially when we're looking at Healthy Start and how this is affected. We look at the cause. We look at limited or no breastfeeding, poor positions of the tongue, as well as abnormal swallowing, soft diet processed foods, increased use of bottle pacifier, and poor oral habits. That can be a thumb sucker, a finger sucker, 
um, tongue thrust, which causes an undeveloped dental arch and jaw. When we look at what that results in, we see a compromised airway. Mouth breathing, snoring, swollen adenoids and tonsils, slow tongue, underdeveloped dental arches, overbite, open bite, cross bite, which basically also is seen and causes sleep disorder breathing. So when we look at these symptoms, we can see where the vicious circle started, what's being affected, and basically looking at the symptoms, and then going back to how are we going to address this compromised airway. We're going to fix it. So this is what our, ob our objective is with Healthy Start. We're going to fix sleep disorder breathing in children, as well as straightening their teeth. We're going to do the whole at the same time in a short period of time. So here's how. Healthy Start. Over 3 million cases have been used worldwide. We have 500, um, 511 international pass, patents as well as being FDA approved. Healthy Start. We're going to expand the dental arches. We're going to establish nasal breathing, discourage mouth breathing. Um, nasal breathing prepares air for optimal assimilation by the lungs. It filters, warms, and moisturizes. Training the tongue. We need to strengthen the tongue, we need to reposition it, and we need to promote the proper swallow and to encourage proper speech. Eliminating bad habits such as thumb sucking, finger sucking, reverse swallow. It also eliminates open bites. So these are just the beginning of what we can do. We continue with guiding ideal growth and development. So the middle and lower third of the head as well as the airway. We're going to bring the growth the lower jaw forward and down. We promote growth and development. We correct any orthodontic diagnosis to a class one. Ideal overbite and overjet, proper intercuspation, all 28 teeth in place before age 12. Reduce and elimination of future relapse, reduce chance for orthodontic treatment. I'll make one comment. Um, many of us have had orthodontic care. Um, the problem with orthodontics is we're fighting relapse. Always, always, always. How many parents do we talk? Been in braces once, twice, three times. We still have crowding. We've been treating so late in life. So at age 12, these teeth have already erupted into our mouth. And there are these fiber bundles that basically anchor our teeth. If those fiber bundles are already developed and we try repositioning the teeth, they're like rubber bands. They want to go back. So we're fighting an endless battle. So by going early, starting at an earlier age, as those teeth are guiding, we're actually catching them before those fiber bundles have developed, and they develop into that proper occlusion. So there's no relapse. We're allowing those fiber bundles to be our retainer for life. It's permanent. So here's Michael at age nine, after a healthy start. We started here. We had the funnel look. This child's actually a, 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 not a heavy child, but actually <laughs> It just looks that way because the chin is so far back. So after treatment, that lower jaw is forward and you can see, you can see the development of the chin, you can see the definement, and the lower jaw is brought forward. Here's a picture of this airway. This is before, and this is after. What a difference. The dentition. This is what we call a deep overbite. The overbite was corrected. Obviously, the teeth are put into place. And you can see, you have a beautiful, permanent dentition. Here we go. Here's Michael, looking healthier. 12 months in Healthy Start. Here's the beginning. This is quite, it's a V-shaped, narrow, crowding. Crowding is due because the arch is not fully developed. Same thing, lower arch. We see that the teeth are coming in in a rotated angle. So by expanding the arch, allowing the teeth to come in straight, we're able to gain the proper correction both in the lower and the upper arch. Sleep disorder breathing and ADD and ADHD. We find that if we look at the symptoms of ADD and ADHD, we look at a list of symptoms. We look at the list of symptoms for sleep disorder breathing. They look very similar. What we have found that children that sometimes exhibit these symptoms could be misdiagnosed for sleep disorder breathing. So it's really important that you evaluate or have your dentist evaluate this child, your child, children, 
for different dental conditions. As we said, compromised airway, narrow palate, mouth breathing. And these can all affect them and cause behaviors similar to ADD and ADHD. There was a doctor, Dr. Karen Bonnick. She did sleep disorder breathing and ADD and ADHD. She studied 11,000 children for six years. The study was uh, published in a peer-reviewed journal. And basically, the key results of this study was sleep disorder breathing increases the risk of ADD, ADHD by 50%. Sleep disorder breathing and bedwetting. Bedwetting is one of those symptoms that we don't really talk about too much, but it's quite prevalent. And what we have found, that children that actually wear their appliance um, result in basically the stoppage of bedwetting. We find that if a child is wearing this appliance, it brings more oxygen into the body by breathing through their nose rather than their mouth. And whether or not that oxygen basically, um, if it's restricted in any way, the body realizes this and holds that oxygen for the vital organs. And unfortunately, some of the organs are not vital and which can cause to or cause or lead to that way. So by allowing an appliance to go in, that's one of the symptoms that we see that is corrected quite quickly. Again, we talked about reducing the oxygen, the body to restrict oxygen, distributation to the vital organs. It's kind of a fight or flight symptom. So let's look at some case studies. So we see a five-year-old who actually used the Healthy Start. This is two years later. You can see the difference. Profiles change, lower jaw forward. She had a very severe overjet. This is her final result. Again, another child, 12. This is two years. You can see his original. You can see he has quite the overjet, overbite. Bringing a lot of lower jaw forward, you can see the nice finish. Here's an eight-year-old boy. Same deal. Quite an overjet, overbite. He was able to actually use the appliance, um, train them to breathe through their nose, but at the same time, correcting the dentition. Healthy Start will change lives, and that's what we're here today to inform you, educate you, and hopefully you'll take with you a little bit more information when you take a look at your children tonight. It's really important. Go to your dentist, have them evaluate your child. Let's see if there's something else going on besides what we C is the symptoms. Symptoms are something that indicates there's another problem. Let's look and see if there's a compromised airway. Let's see how your child is breathing, whether the tongue is in the right position and whether they're breathing through their nose rather than their mouth. I hope you have enjoyed this evening. Um, I would hope for you to be able to start a new chapter for your child's life. Hopefully you'll see uh, many positive changes, both health as well as straightening their teeth. Thank you for joining us. Awesome.